Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to take a look at this 50 watt LED floodlight backpack 6000K waterproof high power lamp canby combination. So that title makes a lot of sense because backpack and canby combination. But essentially this is a 50 watt floodlight. I paid $5 for this from a US seller called Mini Davy One. And the description has some interesting stuff in it too. The lamp body and radiator are riveted together in order to heat dissipation faster. High quality sense LEDs and driver as a union to reduce influencing factor, whatever that means. Constant current and constant voltage driver design with over current protection, over voltage protection, over temperature protection, and short circuit protection. Mini dimension and lightweight. Waterproof grade is IP67 with 25H silica gel. I think they made silicone, not silica gel. Silica gel is the stuff they put in pill bottles so that it doesn't get wet. Working temperature from minus 40 Fahrenheit to 360 Fahrenheit, non-deformation, all product test in the fridge, and 200 Fahrenheit boiling water. So that's cool. Let's open it up. So we have our lamp with the bracket already screwed on, comes in this bag, and it says 50 watt LED floodlight, AC 90 to 260 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, LED color 6500K. The damaged is invalid, whatever that means. On here we have our LEDs, we have, we have six rows of eight LEDs, so that's 48 LEDs total. And on here, I can already see some diodes, a capacitor, what look like transformers or inductors, and maybe a driver chip. So it lights up, and it's very bright. No flicker visible to me or to the camera, and can't see anything else on the bench now because this is so bright. So this is very bright. The question is, is it really 50 watts? So I'm going to put this down here. Get the clamp meter in. Going to measure the current on the live wire. And we're getting just over half an amp. So this is really 50 watts. Which is nice because a lot of these LED floodlights from eBay have fake power ratings. So this is very bright. It really is 50 watts. And it's getting quite hot. It's getting uncomfortable to touch. That's not great. It doesn't really even have a heat sink. It just has this piece of metal, which I believe is aluminum because it's not magnetic. It works. That means it's time to take it apart. The lens is held in with these clips, so I'm just going to try to push those out. So it does have a silicone seal around here, which is silicone, not silica gel. And we have, look like 3528 LEDs. Flex comes in here. We have a bridge rectifier, a big capacitor, which is 33 microfarads, 400 volts. That's pretty big. Two transformers, but only one side is connected, so they're being used as inductors. And some chips, which are HA5836AE. So this circuit board was very difficult to reverse engineer for several reasons. First, as you can see, the solder mask is white, which makes it hard to see PCB tracks. Second, I couldn't find a proper data sheet for the chip. I found some information. The HA5836AE is a high precision non-isolated step down LED control chip, integrated 500 volt power MOSFET, constant current, ultra low operating current, no auxiliary power supply circuit, wide input voltage, 
few peripheral components. But unfortunately, I couldn't find a data sheet with a typical application schematic to use as a base. If you watch this channel often, then you'll know many of the schematics that I show are printouts of typical application schematics with component values adjusted. But here, I had nothing to work from, so I had to meter out every single track on the circuit board. And that was made even harder by the fact that my multimeter will beep continuity if the resistance is less than about 5 ohms. And this circuit has some very low value resistors in parallel. Where are they? Here, 1.2 ohm in parallel. And the inductors, which have a very low resistance. So, before we get to the function of this lamp, I want to point out that the ground of the flex goes nowhere. It's soldered onto this pad, which is not connected to anything. This is bad because we have a metal case which is not grounded. Metal cases have to be grounded for safety reasons, especially for outdoor use. Next, I want to point out that the circuit board is not riveted to the case as advertised, but is in fact just glued. So now I want to talk about how the circuit works. First, your AC line feeds into a bridge rectifier made of discrete S2M diodes through this 0 ohm link here, which serves as a fuse. That is then smoothed by this big 33 microfarad 400 volt electrolytic capacitor from JFD, again a no-name brand, which creates a high DC voltage here. Now, that high DC voltage goes directly to four banks of series LEDs that are connected in parallel. And on the negative side, connect to two constant current regulator circuits in parallel. So, this is a really terrible design for several reasons. First, they have LED series strings in parallel without balancing resistors. Since no two LEDs are identical, they each have a slightly different forward voltage. As a result, one series string of LEDs will have a slightly lower forward voltage than the others. This means it will draw more current and die in early death. An LED that's properly run can live to 50,000 hours, but LEDs that are connected in parallel without balancing resistors likely won't make it to 5,000. The other horrible thing they've done is put two current regulators in parallel. Again, since no two semiconductor-based circuit with complementary components are completely identical, one will pass more current than the other, and the second one will just heat sink the first one. This is like putting two 7805s in parallel. It's just a terrible idea. And an even worse idea that they've done is use transformers as inductors. It's like buying two cars and then only driving one. Finally, they've put their fuse on the neutral while it should be on the live. So, in conclusion, this is a terrible floodlight. They use such a terrible circuit that I could design a better one in under a minute. You know what? I'll, here, let me prove it. It's a lazy bridge rectifier, AC, AC, plus minus. What am I doing here? Here, designed in under a minute, real time, and probably better than this. So, not only is it a terrible circuit, they've used sketchy capacitors, and most importantly, they haven't grounded the case. This is unsafe and terrible. Don't buy it. 
Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can buy more stuff to take apart.